on everybody welcome back to another cyt crypto episode my name is stephen Aitchison, and today we're going over the markets looking at the markets overall and a couple of news stories as well and a couple of charts as well as talking with you about crypto whilst having a wee cup of coffee as well so grab your coffee this is probably going to be about 30 40 minutes and um, just the usual the normal and i've just forgot i've never updated that time right we're now updated so cool, I'm just going to see if we're live, make sure everything is up and running okay. Have we got anybody in the house? Got a couple of people in. The usual suspects. Okay, so just jump over to the chat area just now. We have Tim Gash is in the house. Welcome to you, Marcus Jafari, Ajmal Salim, Donny Don Matthew, Barry Burns is in. Good morning to you, Chris Noble, Ross Davidson, Stephen Titaus, Tony P., Ben, uh, ben Polcardi, James Oklahoma, one of our brown admins is in the house, um, saying good morning, crypto family, crush the likes everybody. Yeah, if you go down to the like button just now and hit that like button if you've not done that already. Um, thanks for that, James. Andy Grant is in the house as well. I'm just going to see if we're streaming okay. Stream health is okay. Not that good, but it's okay. Uh, and Mario has joined us as well. I don't believe I've seen you here, Mario, so welcome to the channel. Good to see you here. If you've not already, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so we'll go over to the news, the latest news, or the latest kind of what's happening in the markets overall. Market capitalization, $120.5 billion. Down slightly from yesterday, but that's cool. And um, Bitcoin dominance, 52.8%. As well, Bitcoin has gone down slightly. We'll look at the charts for Bitcoin as well. And we've got Ethereum back in number two spot as XRP goes down a little. So it's down to 30 cents, but um, it's gone down. Overall market capitalization is going to keep us kind of third spot, but it might jump between one, uh, two and three. Same with Ethereum as well. So they're kind of swapping um, positions just now. Okay, who's the tops? Moac. 17%, Huobi token, 12%, Metaverse ETP is 11%, so that's the ones in double-digit greens. And percentage overall, we've only got about 40% in the green, 60% in the red. Theta is down 9.29%, and that's had a big run-up as well, though. Revain is down 8.45, Digibyte, Aurora, Pithex, Arc, um, Tron, all of them have had a kind of run-up as well. Just going to take a quick look at the BTC. <laughs> The BTC value. So Tron is at 676. And Theta 2273. Electronium is doing well at number 60 position. 192. It's only down 2.3. So I'm just going to see who's highest. Yeah, it's still Moak. You'll be talking Metaverse because it stayed relatively stable. Dash is making a run for it, I see as well. That's on the BTC value. Okay, we'll take a, look, take a look at the overall market and see who's up over 24 hours. We have Bitcoin, and um, this is um, for tokens that have traded over $100,000 over a period of 24 hours. Bitcoin has traded 163000 and it's up 66% um, over the last 24 hours and up 49% over the week. Adamant um, Messenger is up 53% over the 24 hours. Anybody else? Bitcoin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Bitcoin, obviously, but with two eyes, is up 30% over 24 hours as well. Well, who's, see who's done well over seven days. Inocoin, we kind of mentioned that yesterday. Twinkle, Quant, still the big ones, uh, not the big ones, still the ones from yesterday and the day before. Big Bomb, DAC is up 60%. So it's not big major movers, we'll just see over 10, 10k, just um, for a laugh. So it's good to see some of these that have jumped over. That'll probably take a bit to kind of load. Um, module trade is up 200%. That's on 12k ESD chain, 89k for Hempcoin. So Hempcoin's on its way back up. That's 89,000. That's not bad trading as well. Yeah, it's just to have a, a look at them. It's always good to keep an eye on kind of what's happening as well. Okay, so we'll jump over, just make sure it's still live. Yeah, the live stream is better. And that's good. We'll jump over to the charts. Litecoin. Now, I've kind of put in the headlines, could this double? 
I'm seeing a possible double up to kind of going up to seventy dollars here um, for Litecoin. Now I know that kind of seems impossible just now, but it's not that far to go. It's forty-three dollars at the moment, um, but I'm thinking this could actually go up to um, seventy dollars if BTC stays stable or rises with it, or it could be that Litecoin brings the rest of the market up as well. It's had a good run just now. We kind of mentioned it before it ran up at thirty-three dollars. We said, okay, this is. This is going to run and it did it ran up to 47 dollars and we also said it's going to come back down and then go back up so i think this is going to have a run up to about 70 dollars but that's just my opinion and um, take it with a pinch of salt and um, as well don't kind of trust me don't trust anybody out there trust your own research so that's just what i think is going to happen over the coming over the next coming weeks so i'm talking about a couple of weeks for this to happen they might th um, think I'm crazy for saying that, but uh, I think with positive sentiment, kind of fundamentals has been forgotten about, is now kind of back in the forefront of people's minds. And I think it's just going to have a run um, from here as well. And I'm talking about literally from here, about $43. I did think it was going to go down to about, um, come back down to about $35, because I thought we were going to get a cup and handle here. Cup and handle didn't really happen. So I said at forty dollars might come back down to about thirty-five dollars and then kind of start going up. Didn't quite happen that way. So I don't know if it's going to go up from forty-three dollars or come back down a wee bit and then go up again. But again, it's just my opinion. It might be totally and utterly wrong. Uh, as I said, don't kind of trust what anybody says. As well, do your own research on this as well. But I just think it's due for a big run up with all the kind of positive sentiment out there as well. And it's now at the forefront of people's minds. People are talking about it again because it's had that run up um, as well. Okay, we'll just have a look at some of the stories before we go on as well. Thanks for this, James, as well. It's not the one you kind of sent me, but it's just um, kind of the same story. So Ripple Price Analysis, XRP going back to 28 cents. So they're talking about the Ripple Price going down, obviously, because it's been going down quite a bit. We'll just have a look at the Ripple Price just now. XRP BTC. So it's now 8,312 Satoshi at the moment. Uh, on the daily chart, doesn't look good. On the four hourly chart, obviously, doesn't look good. Uh, on the hourly chart, doesn't look good. So on all the charts, doesn't really look that great for Ripple price at the moment. However, me, I'm very optimistic. I'm not, I've got, um, I've not got a lot of Ripple. Um, probably got a couple of thousand dollars worth. I'm not concerned at all about the Ripple price, to be honest, even if it does go down to 28 cents or 25 cents. I know it's going to kind of reach its all-time high very soon. Not, I'm just not bothered at all. I'll just go back to the, the Bitcoin price or the BTC value. Oh, was it that anyway? Um, so, yeah, so 90... What's the, the old time? We'll go up to the old time. Old time high. So talking about 22,000, I think within a couple of months it's going to way surpass 22,000 Satoshi. Whatever the BTC price is, I think it's going to way surpass that. So short term drops um, just don't bother me at all. Although we've got long term, long -term support here around about 8,300. We do have kind of support there. Um, we had resistance there previously as well. And we've now got support there. But if it drops further, it just doesn't concern me whatsoever. So that was the ripple price analysis. Basically, they're saying it's going to fall. They think it's going to fall down um, to about 28 cents as well. Okay, BitTorrent. BitTorrent rises on the crypto market as TRX holders continue to receive BTT. So the first BTT airdrop by the Tron Foundation and BitTorrent um, Inc. was scheduled to distribute 1.1% of the total token supply. And um, this meant a cool 10.89 billion was going to be distributed at once to hodlers of TRX. Um, using the value of the token at the time of the airdrop, there was going to be an influx of approximately 2,500 BTC worth of the token and the crypto markets. However, it started to go up. BTT continues to thrive. So many traders had put forth two scenarios for the token's reaction in the crypto markets due to the airdrop. Firstly, the immediate influx of BTT from the airdrop would cause massive selling that would dilute the value of the token. 
The second scenario, scenario was that crypto exchange and wallets responsible for the distribution would take some time processing all the transactions related to the airdrop. This would then create an opportunity for BTT to thrive in the markets as interest grew from traders. So it looks as if the second scenario has kind of come to fruition. Although, although if we're being really conspiratorial, you would say it's in the best interest of Justin Sun and CZ to keep the BTT price up and not let it tank, which is good for BTT kind of traders as well. So I would say that has a lot to do with it as well, if we're being really honest here. So BTT is continuing to thrive. That's the kind of main thing. We kind of spoke about it yesterday. Um, it didn't get to the high teens. I thought it was going to get to 18, 19. I thought it would have been a brilliant buy-in to get a doubler, to get 100% gain. It didn't do that. It went down to about 20, though. It did go, yeah, go, went down to 20. So it could still double from there at 20 and go up to 40, but uh, I need to wait and see what happens. I think once the airdrop starts to kind of hit people's wallets as well, I think we're still going to be able to see a bit of a sell-off and we'll stay around about this kind of price, but I do think longer term it's going to go up until the tech is really understood um, with BTT. Um, and I still think it's going to be a great trading coin. And I did get out 24 um, for BTT and it did go down to 20 after that and I didn't get back in. Uh, I just thought there was something kind of amiss with the trading there, but I guess it kind of happens in all, all the projects as well. So, BTT doing well. Pundi X is doing well. We've kind of spoke about this over the last couple of days. Uh, we bought back in at 17 for the community fund. Um, once we got the BTT, go back into Pundi X at 17. It's now up to 19. We'll just see what the order books are like for Pundi X. It's looking good. So it's coming up for one to one at 18, 19. Uh, one to one ratio, one to one buy to sell ratio or sell to buy ratio. It's coming up for that. It's not quite there yet, um, but it's coming up for that. So, and um, that's looking good at the moment. So this might go to 19, 20 Satoshi um, today or it could go higher than that. So BTT and PundiX lead the way on Binance. And somebody asked yesterday, what's better to get into BTT or PundiX? Uh, said it could be kind of both of them, but BTT are kind of leading the way at the moment. Um, I think that's when it was at 24 yesterday. 24 would have given it a four, if it jumped to four, 16% gain. And PundiX would have given it 5% on each. Satoshi would have given it a 10% gain. So yeah. BTT leading the way just now. Who else is doing APPC? App coins are just are up and coming just now as well. They're on their way down again after jumping up. That's after the crossover. Went up 16% after the crossover. Uh, Dash is on a run as well. It's dashing upwards. That's a shit pun, isn't it? <laughs> Terrible pun. Neo is coming up as well. Good. That's up to eight dollars seven. I think Neo's going to have a run as well. I think Neo is going to have a run over, um, kind of up to fifteen dollars as well. But we'll take a look at that later on, not today. Uh, I'm still looking at that as well. But it's had a run up. Um, once it's crossed over the daily, it's um, the seventy MA has crossed over, and that looks as if it's going to have a run up as well. You could get a cup and handle there as well forming at 241,000 Satoshi. Okay, BNB, Binance, that's a bit of news as well. Binance chain testnet to be released for public testing on the 20th of February. Um, thanks to CKA, uh, one of the brown admins for doing um, letting us know that story as well. So check that out before. Um, CZ finally got a date targeting to release Binance chain testnet for public testing on February 20th. This is a test net. Your feedback would be most valuable. So that's going to be good for Binance. Binance is on the up and up as well. They've, I think they've already reached the all time high with regards to Satoshi value. And they're sitting at 260,000 Satoshi just now. Let's go to the weekly. You can see here, this was a resistance line for them. Um, so we said here with Binance, what would probably happen is it would go up to uh, 265k Satoshi, come back down a wee bit, then start going back up to go to the 300,000. It's kind of done that. It's been doing that. 
as well. This is kind of a massive kind of cup and handle. So there we've done it here. Uh, it's not come down as much as I thought it would. I thought it would come down to about 240. And it still might might come to about 240,000 Satoshi. Um, and then go back up and go for the breakthrough of 300,000 Satoshi. And then onwards and upwards for Binance. Binance are just doing all the right things just now. Despite what a lot of people are kind of saying about CZ as well. I just think they're doing all the right things at the moment. So that's good news for them. I think that's it for the news. Yep. Um, yep. What other news did we have? Did we have other news? Could LTC, Binance Chain, XRP price, BTT, right? So I've done all the news. So that's cool. We can just chat. We can just chill out and chat and have a wee cup of coffee. Right, who's in the chat? Who else has come in and joined us? Have we got more people in? Yeah, we've got 44 people uh, in just now. If you're just joining us just now, go down to the like button just now and hit that like button just now. That'd be fantastic. So crush the likes, everybody. And if you're new here as well, just let me know in the chat. If you're new here and you're just watching on the sidelines, just let me know and I'll give you a big shout out. And that's what it's all about. This channel is about community. And we've got a kind of free, pre we've got a free group as well. Uh, for Telegram and kind of Facebook. We don't really use the Facebook group, but we've got the Telegram group that's active in there and we've got the premium group as well where, where I do daily, daily calls um, on that. And I think uh, daily calls are averaging about 16, 17% gain, which is good. Um, we've got lots of different strategies we're kind of trying out as well. Okay, who else is in? Alex Jug is in the house. Uh, good to see you here. Stephen King, David Schwartz, Gino Dow. Mac Paul and High Plains Drifter. Um, James Oklahoma, what are your thoughts on TRX? Got on about A20 and put a sell order in expecting a jump before the BTT airdrop and missed a fall. Big boy pants on, just your opinion. TRX, I think, is going to go back up. So it's come down. I did expect it to go up to about a thousand Satoshi before the kind of BTT airdrop. Didn't happen, obviously. So it looks as if Tron is on its way down. So it's 674 just now. Um, Again, uh, this is conspiratorial a wee bit as well. It's not in CZ's best interest to let Tron go down too much either. So I think with that, with the kind of close ties I've got um, with Binance as well uh, and BTT as well, I don't think, I just don't think they're going to let it happen or go down much further than this. So obviously it's kind of been down um, way low as well, but I think we're going to see a bounce of the 50 EMA. I guess what you're asking, James, is should you hold or not, I would kind of hold, I would hold, if, I, if it was me, I would hold just now um, for the sake of maybe a couple of weeks uh, or something for that, just to kind of look out, but, and I wouldn't put a stop loss on if you if you bought at A20, obviously, you'd have been way past your stop loss, 5% stop loss, you'd have sold out at 780, um, so I would just hold just now, if I'm being honest, obviously, big boy pants on and all that, James, you know the story, Um but I would hold it and I think it's going to go back up. And I still think it's going to hit that thousand Satoshi level as well. We're getting a lot of cup and handle scenarios um, with a lot of the projects as well. And we could have had one. I thought we were going to get one there as well, around about a thousand Satoshi. It didn't quite happen. So it might still kind of go up to a thousand, come back down, then die back up again. TRX for the long term, I think, um, is a safe bet, although the tech and stuff like that, but they've got a lot of positive sentiment and they've got a lot of Tron fan people out there as well. Benjamin K is in the house. Good morning to you, G Slick, Jason Ray, um, Dennis Varder Hagen. So just say Dennis, I do I do apologize if I spelt your or pronounced your second name wrong there. Good to see you here. Uh, Antonio is in as well. Um Gino Dow told you so the other day BTT would go up. Um, got my BTT this morning. Yep, we kind of said that. We said that on the channel as well. We thought it was going to go back up. Um, I always have a buy-in for XRP at 29 cents. When it goes over 31, it's a good way to snipe a quick profit. Excellent. That's a good um, good snipe there. Um, Antonio, shall keep my NPSX and my Nano to get airdrop? Um, yes, you can do. Or you could download the X wallet that they've got as well. You could download that. I think you get that on a daily basis. So you might want to download it and keep it in there if you feel comfortable doing that. 
Benton Taylor, hi Steve, you have all your calls in place holding my breath. I'm half in on LTC, excellent. What's your suggestions? Hold or get out? Tough one. For LTC, I see I'm always about kind of take profit. Now, now what we've learned in 2018, I always take profit. Um, but if you're half in on LTC and you've taken profit already, um, I'm, uh, <laughs> I would go for it. $42, I do think it's going to go up. It's just my opinion though, you can't really go on that. And if I'm being really honest, I don't think it's just going to go up to $70. I think we're going to see a massive run up for Litecoin. If I'm being really honest. So I'm saying $70, I'm being conservative there. Uh, I'm definitely being conservative. So for me, if it was me thinking the way I'm thinking just now, I would just hold. I would hold, if I'm being honest. But put your big boy pants on and all that stuff. Um, Richard Cooper is in the house. Bernard Ronald is in the house as well. <laughs> Finally getting to I still as a tongue twister for me. Surprisingly, XRP has shown a lot of weakness. Is it because of people using resources and other coins which are pumping now? It could well be. It could well be for XRP as well. But as I said, I'm just, I think what's going to happen with XRP is we're still stable there just now, around about the 8,300 level. We could go down, if we're looking at this kind of on a technical analysis point of view, we could go down and hit that kind of 6,800 level again uh, and go back down there. But again, for me, that would be an accumulation zone. Um, if I would just be accumulating it because I think... But Ripple, when it goes, it's just going to, it's not, it's not going to give any kind of TA indication. It's just going to go and it's just going to keep on going and it's going to keep on going and it's going to keep on going. Therefore, surpassing its all time high of 22,000 Satoshi. Don't really care about the, the USD value. It doesn't matter. That's, that's purely based on the Bitcoin price. So the USD value, um, Ripple doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, there's no point even kind of looking at that. And the value just now. We can only do that from a, a recent point of view for the TA if you're looking at the USD value. But if you're looking at the BTC value, that's what we should be looking at. And it's way going to surpass the BTC value um, as well. Uh, it's not going to surpass a $3 kind of value unless Bitcoin doubles or triples um, from here as well. But for me, XRP is definitely a long term hold. And you're just going to wake up one day and it's going to be off the charts and you're going to go holy shit what the hell happened and then everybody's going to FOMO in and um, that's what I believe is going to happen with Ripple and I think to a degree that's what's going to happen with Litecoin as well people are starting to kind of wake up and I think Litecoin is going to go and go mental going to go mental um, Gavin Mearns morning from Hull it's good to see Electronium now have cloud mining on Android and they've had that for a while Electronium was oh, that cloud mining? Is that different that you're talking about? Because I've had the mining for a while on the Android. Uh, Mike Cryptico is in the house as well. Good to see you here. Just like going balls to the walls on Pundex and Dent and DGB. Uh, I think for me, Pundex, I think they've got something up the sleeve. Pundex. So we spoke about yesterday how they're doing the kind of airdrops. They're going to be finishing the airdrops as of June 2019. So they want to get it all out of the way. Now, they've done it under the auspices of saying, OK, this is due to regulation uh, and compliance and security and all that. I think there's something more than that. And I think they've got something kind of up the sleeve um, as well. And they want to get the airdrops out of the way and want to get all the coins out there just now before they kind of change over as well. So I need to dig more into that as well before I kind of speak about it. But I think there's something more to it than that as well, in a good way, in a, definitely in a good way. Mervyn Skidmore, um, morning all, stuck in sunny Dover this week, watching on my phone in the hotel car park, <laughs> brilliant old mates, excellent, excellent, you've always got mates here Mervyn, always mates here, Eric, good morning to you, James Gibbons, one of our brown admins, morning Stevie O and CYT people, good to see you James, um, exciting time up ahead, I think there is exciting times up ahead as well, um, we might still have one wee drop for BTC, um, BTC USD, I don't think, did we look at the BTC price? So, I was talking about this in the premium group yesterday. I've got this symmetrical triangle, which is usually a bullish sign for me, it's a bullish sign. We could kind of drop below the symmetrical triangle, I don't think that's going to happen. I think what's going to happen, the likely scenario for BTC is that we're going to come down to this support line, 
round about, over the coming days, round about 3,350. Keep that support at 3,350. And then we're going to kind of go up and kind of go between that. And then it's going to break out from there. So I think the likely scenario is kind of up and down within this kind of triangle. Up and down. Might get there, get down there, get down there. And then it's going to go whoosh. And then it's going to whoosh. And it's going to jump right back up. And we're going to see four and a half thousand, five thousand dollars round about beginning of March. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, just my opinion, though. Totally biased and totally on the optimistic side as well, as always. Uh, nothing on the downside. Well, there is obviously on the downside. It could do, the other scenario could be it just breaks right down below that and just surprises the heck out of everybody and it just breaks um, kind of way below that. Hits 3,000, goes below 3,000, but I don't think so. That's what I think is going to happen. And we're in that symmetrical triangle just now. So we'll wait and see. But I do think Bitcoin is going to have a big jump up and we might even get back to the $6,000 um, in March, beginning of March. Probably talking absolute shite, but we'll see. We'll need to wait and see what happens. Crypto Dread is in the house. Good morning to you. Dennis is saying it's okay, haha, uh, about his, your name. Tell me how to pronounce it because I'm always curious about how to pronounce your name. Um, and second names as well. Jumped out of Pundi at 17 and BTT at 22. Where does one buy these big boy pants? Um, you get them in all good retail stores, uh, your big boy pants. Um, we can send some over. We've got special CYT big boy pants that we can send over to you as well. I need to get them made up. That'd be quite cool if you could get Y fronts, their big boy pants, and just the same big boy pants on. That'd be quite cool if you could do that. We probably can. I'm just doing myself. Donny Don Matthew, 297,000 sell order for BNB. Would that be doable, Steve? I think so. I think so because 300,000 um, Satoshi is going to be a psychological level. So that's going to be a resistance, definitely. So I think 297,000 is a good one there, Donny. Um, I think that's good to put it there. And, and quite sensible to put it there as well. Um, but it may just crash through that as well. And you never know. Metam went up a bit today and CMC updated the coin bond. Brilliant. So we've been waiting on CMC updating the coin bond because um, Metam off burned 20 million coins. So we'll just look at that just now. METM. Have they updated it? Oh, they have um, 20 million. So the total supply before was 200. 200 million, it's now 180 million, circulating supply is 90 million, 369,000, that's good, <clears throat> that's good, and we'll just take a look at some of the smaller coins as well, coin signals, Metamorph 94, so it did jump up to about 115, came back down since, I don't know if that's up to date, is it up to date? I'll go in the early. So it's not up to date. So we need to get an up to date one. Up 15%, 113 Satoshi. And um, so I don't know if that is correct. I'll just refresh that. If we're up to 113, that is good. It says 94 there. And that's 11th of February, so it's not giving us an up to date one. Let's refresh that as well. Yeah, it looks like 113 Satoshi. I'll just do the seven days. So that's good. There's jumping up. Um, so we just need to get correct figures for that. Um, where was it trading? Was it the biggest trader now? Still Mercatox. So we'll just look on Mercatox just now. Mercatox. And this is Metamorph, if anybody's new, kind of here, this is Metamorph, we've been um, kind of talking about it for a long time. A lot of people are in it just now. And it is, where is it? 123 Satoshi. That's the sell orders, buy orders, 106. And the trade history, looking at 121 Satoshi just now. That was at 827, was the last buy. So it's not... A lot of trading going on, but still up 121 Satoshi, so that's good. And who else were we looking at? We'll look at BAB, obviously. Um, a lot of us 
are in Bab. Some of us are out as well, um, like myself at the moment. Hopefully I can trade my way back into Bab when it comes out with the license. So it's down at 9 Satoshi, it's still trading within that channel at the moment, at the lower end of the channel. And we'll just look on KuCoin for there. KuCoin forward slash and and just look at the order books. I always like to look at the order books. That gives you a kind of an indication, especially when it's slow, slow moving. So eight Satoshi to buy is 26 million. Nine Satoshi to sell at uh, two and a half million coins. That is two and a half million coins. So that could jump back up between nine and 10. So I did sell it with Satoshi, you all kind of know that anyway, I've told you all that. But I'm still rooting for Bab, so I always want them to kind of do well. And obviously I want to, I'd love to jump back in once I get the license as well. And Digitex Futures, a lot of people are kind of still watching that. 948 Satoshi for that. BPT is still going up. So expect that to happen for Blockport. Blockport coming out with uh, more and more good news all the time. So I've been speaking about that for a while and that's one of the top five coins that I kind of put out that's going to kind of double in price for 2019. It's, it's kind of almost done that, I think. It's going to go up. Um, 1249, yeah, it's done that already. So that's good. Um, who else are we looking at? How do? How do? Always interesting. How do? How do is at the very kind of bottom. 190 Satoshi at the moment. So not doing well at all on price just now, but they've not released anything yet. They're still in the process of doing that. Um, we'll be speaking to David later on this week, hopefully as well, David Bradley. And the group is still doing well, so I do expect this to kind of jump up as well. This is just because nothing is happening at the moment, but when things start moving, I think it's going to start moving. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's the case. Honest Crypto Journey is in the house, just popped in today, hi, but I need to shoot to work soon, we'll watch this later, like, smash, thanks very much mate, really appreciate that, Liam Seabrook is in, Crypto Don Juan is in the house, good morning to you, Vibes is in, been watching you on the sidelines for a while, keep up the good work mate, oh brilliant that you could um, join us in the chat as well Vibes, uh, good to have you here, really appreciate it, um, G Slick Ken been going up, excellent, um, good news, we spoke about Ken for ages um, last, last year, uh, it wasn't doing much at all, but it's starting to go up. Oh, that's, we'll look at the Kin ETH. Kin Ethereum. So we're looking at 24 Gui, Gui, whatever, however you pronounce it. It's not doing much at the moment, but we're still there, and I still expect that to do big things. Kin. Dennis said, uh, do you think the Pundi X has something positive uh, up their sleeve? I do. I do. Spidey senses, nothing else to go on. Nothing whatsoever to go on. Uh, just, I think there's something, there's something there. Liam Seabrook, I think BTC is going to go down to around $1,000 before its next build run. Hyperwave theory. I know kind of Tyler Jenkins talks about the hyperwave theory and a lot of people are kind of looking at that as well. Um, for the moment, for the moment, at the moment, I don't see that happening down to $1,000. I don't see it happening just, just now, but could well do. It might well do. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, at the moment, we're in a kind of um, a positive kind of sentiment just now. Everybody's kind of positive about the alts and kind of BTC at the moment, um, which is a good thing um, because if you could just keep getting knocked down and knocked down and knocked down, then um, a lot of, that's when capitulation happens and a lot of people just leave. So at the moment, we're in this kind of positive phase of the markets. Although we're only at three thousand five hundred sixty-five, you go. That's not really positive, but it is kind of positive. Kind of what's happening just now. So I do expect this to kind of have another run up. It might well come back down and go down to a thousand, but and Tyler Jenkins talks about that and he talks about the hyperwave theory and how it's going to go to millions of dollars for BTC. And that's the thing, everybody, every single person that says this is going to go down to a thousand or two thousand or whatever, every single one of them say it's going to jump right back up and it's going to be over a hundred thousand dollars. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're buying BTC just now, if you bought Bitcoin just now, if you bought, say, 10 Bitcoin just now for $30,000 and somebody said, oh, it's going to go down to $1,000, would you wait and buy? But if on the other side of the coin, if they're saying, but 
even though it does go down to a thousand dollars, it's going to go up to a hundred thousand dollars, or two hundred thousand, or two hundred fifty. We just say, okay, I'm still buying just now. I'll just keep a hold of it for five years. So it doesn't matter when you buy. And this is where dollar cost averaging comes into its own as well. If you buy at three thousand, then buy at two thousand, then buy at one thousand, obviously you're going to get more Bitcoin. So it, it just doesn't matter because it's going to go up anyway. So who the hell cares if it goes down a thousand dollars? But a lot of people are going to care and they're going to get out of the markets because they're just going to go, right, enough's enough. That's it. So I totally understand it from that point of view as well. For the moment, though, I don't see it going down to $1,000 at the moment, but we'll see what happens. It'd be interesting to see. Tim Guy, Steve, do you think at the end of the BTC futures contract on the 13 will have an impact this month? Kind of, well, uh, kind of does for a wee bit. It just um, kind of fluctuates between 100 hundred and two hundred dollars um, either kind of up or down, so it kind of probably will have. I would imagine a lot of people have be on longs just now, so a lot of people will be in um, Bitcoin for the kind of long. And I don't know BTC longs. So this is the, the long position, 32,584. That's on Bitfinex for longs. This on the daily. So quite high for longs. So if they're going to have to close a position, then we could see a drop, obviously. BTC USD shorts. Hmm. It's not that bad. 24,000 going up. It's not that bad actually, so I don't think you're going to see much of a difference, to be honest, Tim. Um, James, I can't get my head around um, the Hyperwave group. I mean, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it won't happen. I just do not personally see value in saying it will go to one k if it bottoms at two and a half k. They look foolish. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I've seen obviously what kind of the videos and stuff like that with Tone Vase and Tyler and Leah as well. <sighs> I don't, I'm, I'm not getting it. If, I, if I'm being honest, I'm not getting it. Um, but it's just another way, it's just another theory. And they're going to look bloody amazing if it does go down to 1K and they're going to say, I told you so. And then they're going to get a rush of kind of subscribers saying, okay, they, these people said it was going to hit 1K and it's hit 1K. But see, my thinking is, and I believe in this kind of wholeheartedly, what you kind of put out there is what's going to happen. So it's like, um, if they're saying it's going to go down to 1k and more and more people are listening to them, what are people going to start doing? They're going to start selling up at 3k, at 3.5k, at 4k, or when it jumps up, they're going to sell up thinking it's going to go down to 1k and they're just going to wait and it happen, happening. And then they're going to start telling their friends that, oh, Tyler says it's going to go down to 1k, you need to watch these videos. More and more people start selling because they think it's going to go down to 1k. So it's becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you put the energy out there of it going to 1k, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because more and more people are gathering that kind of energy of the 1K theory and it's going to happen automatically as more and more people listen to Tone Vays and Tyler and Leah and kind of talk about the hyperwave theory as well. It is going to happen. So if it catches on and more and more people talk about it, then it is going to happen. But if it catches on that more and more people are talking about Bitcoin going up, it is going to happen as well. So it's just a battle just now. It always has been a battle. So that's what I think is going to happen. It just depends on what energy is going to win with this. And at the moment, it's kind of a split. It is split. And I see people kind of looking on the um, optimistic side and saying it's going to go up. Obviously, people want it to go up. Although it doesn't matter if it goes down or up, depending because you can trade um, kind of short on Bitcoin as well. So it shouldn't really matter, but it does. Most people um, go on the optimistic side and want to buy for the long. Most people don't want to buy short for some reason. Um, what do you think about the hyperwave theory? Yeah, I've kind of explained it. I just, I'm not getting it. I think, if, I, th I think it, it's not about he's making a name for himself. Um, Tyler, I don't think it's um, just about that. Because there's one kind of smart dude as well, obviously Tone Vays and Leah, they kind of talk about it all the time as well. I just don't get it, if I'm being honest. Um, 
Steve, hypothetically, if we see a rise of BTC over 4,200, could we move back in and keep funds in Terra? All the finan uh, final capitulation talk of 1,800, 200 range is confusing the decision. Yeah, it's difficult. So if we move back up to 4,200, a lot of people are going to Tether. They're going to go into Terra um, or USDT. They're going to go into that. And that would be fine to do that because it's now... Um, so kind of entrenched in the minds of people that we're going to have one last run up and then it's going to fall down to kind of 2000 before it goes back up again. That's it's likely going to happen because more and more people are talking about it all the time. And even the people that don't really know about technical analysis, and I, I probably put myself in that kind of position as well, um, even kind of likes of the people like that, they're just kind of newbies as well. They're saying, oh, it's going to have one last run up, then it's going to fall, and then it's going to give that big kind of bull run. Um, I think it is going to happen because people, the energy of that happening is happening, I think. And we're starting to see that. So, yeah, um, it might be wise to put some money into Tether. Always have money in Tether as well, or USDT or whatever um, stable coin you want to use. And just like fun, fun is not doing anything at the moment. Um, yeah, it's not doing anything. But the good thing about um, Funfair is that it has kind of bottomed. It's near its um, all-time low, and we've got kind of support here. So we've got long-term support here. So we could have a big bounce from here for Funfair. So look at if you look at that line, it's kind of hit that. Loads of times, it's hit that, well, it's nearly hit it. Well, it is kind of loads of times. We'll say loads of times. So it's due a big bounce from here. So I see this going up. Excuse me. I see this going up um, big time for fun fair. I think this is going to bounce around about these levels. But just because it says it's all time low doesn't mean to say it can't go any lower. We have to remember that as well. If it breaks below these prices, if it breaks below 100, then... We're kind of snookered for fun fair, but I don't think that's going to happen. Just my opinion, though. And um, obviously, it's biased opinion because I've got that in my um, portfolio, the Binance portfolio that we're kind of doing, the strategy that we're using for Binance. If you're in a premium group, you'll know what I'm talking about here as well. Any use for BTT? I don't think so. I've not looked, um, obviously, today. James Oklahoma, what exactly was the determination from the info that you received regarding BAB? I wasn't able to dig deep into that report. So I received a report from um, BAB. I'm going to try and find it. Um, what do they know? One's we second. So I'm going to show you this just now. I don't know if I can remember the sign-in. Shouldn't be showing you this, but it doesn't matter. Nah, I didn't think so. Um, uh, no, nah, I can't remember the sign-in. The hell was it? Oh, we're in. Excellent. Save that. Right, okay, and we'll go to my request. So I've written to, this was for kind of Bab as well. I've written to the kind of FCA, the PRA, uh, Bank of England, etc. And I've written to the CM, um, CIMA as well. I've written to CIMA as well. So all banking license applications. So this is kind of what I got back. So that was for the, the FCA, the Financial um, Authority, all banking license information, not with the awaiting classification. So letter to Mr. Aitchison, we'll download and view that as HTML. So this is from the Bank of England. Um, and I kind of posted this in the kind of groups earlier on. I didn't do it in the BAB groups because they might have thought it was fudding. But thanks for your email. Basically, they're saying a list of all bank and license applications up to and including the 17th of January. 
We assume that you're referring to the status of any current applications that are being processed. Unfortunately, they cannot tell me. And they said, we publish details of the number of new authorizations in the PRA's annual report. Nothing in that. So it goes over to the annual report there. However, more recent figures were provided by Sam Woods, Deputy Governor for the Prudential Regulation and Chief Executive Officer for the PRA to the House of Commons. And we've got kind of written evidence um, there as well. about what they've got. But there's nothing really in the annual report that they've got there. That was from um, 2017, 2018, that was February. So that's not really going to give us much. And this is um, for the Treasury Committee and Ken Sam Woods. There was nothing in there that I could see as well that would give us any indication um, about the kind of bad licenses. And um, so that was it. I really kind of, kind of put a line under that. But that was the kind of information I received and I kind of put that in the groups. As well, but I didn't want to kind of make too much of it because there's nothing really there to be told, to be honest. And I wasn't saying here as well that I didn't believe that Bab hadn't applied for the licenses. I just wanted to see the status of the licenses that applied for at the Bank of England and also Cayman Islands as well. But none of them could give me information. So it was just me doing, doing due diligence, which everybody should do anyway. And just to let you know as well, what do they know is a brilliant site. If you want to kind of get to write to somebody. So I've written to them uh, under um, kind of the Freedom of Information. So this is FOI. So if you want to write to anybody under the Freedom of Information in the UK or in Europe, you can do it in Europe as well, then you can use this site to keep a track of it instead of keeping track of it through your email. So that was the situation, James. There's nothing really an update on that. And as I said, I wasn't fudding it. It was just I wanted to do my own due diligence and see exactly where they were with the licenses, but there's nothing really there, uh, if I'm being really honest just now. didn't give me any more info on it. High Points Drifter, I doubt it will go much below 3K. Too many buyers around there. I think so. I think 3K is going to be a psychological support. If it does break 3,000, we're kind of scuppered. It is going to go down to 2.5 and, and could go down lower as well. Satoshi, Sean, hi to you. Um, Keg is in the house. Good morning to you. Um, Liam Seabrook, we're all future whales. Yes, we are. Kig, LRC, LRC. Um, I kind of called LRC the other day as well. LRC, BTC, because I thought Loopring was going to go up. Yeah, I still think it's going to bounce from these levels. Um, I did kind of call it and say it's going to bounce from the 50 EMA. It's not quite done that yet, but I do think from these levels it is going to bounce again. Um, we've seen going to look at the, these levels. I've noticed something strange as well. Um, and I've noticed that about Bitcoin and a lot of other coins as well. Something kind of strange. Once it crosses over, um, and the 70 EMA crosses over the 50 EMA, and we use the kind of retracement, the Fib retracement, um, I put in another level of um, 87, 0.87 there, um, just testing it. And obviously there's biased, uh, kind of bi biased hy hypothesis. Um, when you're kind of looking at this, because you're going to find what you're actually looking for. Um, so it's bias confirmation, it's called. So I think it, a lot of the time it bounces down to the 87% level, or 0.87 level, kind of bounces back up from there. Bitcoin's done it um, a number of times, and a lot of other coins have done it as well. So I'm just kind of looking at that, kind of playing out. That's why I've got that 0.87 level, which, which is not a Fibonacci number, but I've just got that from my own level there as well. So it might get down to about 1388, then bounce back up from there. But I do expect to bounce back up uh, for loop ring as well. That was Kig that was asking that. Hot is moving up as well. I think Hot's doing well. Uh, I'll just move that over here, so I'm not looking for it. HOTBTC, I think it's 3334 just now, is it? Yeah, 33 just now. Um, and I think we're due a bounce there for Hot as well. What's it on the 4 hourly? Can I move back up on the 4 hourly? So I think we're due a bounce, and I think that's going up over 40 if BTC stays stable and goes up. Honest Crypto Journey, what do you think about Bab's video interview with Rush D? I was okay. <coughs> I was okay. Um, I don't think Rush D's, uh, Rush D is a good kind of talker. I don't think he's a good orator. Um, but that doesn't mean to say he's not a good CEO. Uh, it doesn't mean to say that at all. I just think... There needs to be energy, there needs to be passion there, there needs to be something that comes across and it was just like very 
I, I don't want to be too critical because people think I'm spreading fud when I'm not because I really want Bab to succeed. But there's there's no energy there. There's no passion. There's no enthusiasm. There's no just. If I was talking about Bab and I really believed in it, I'd, I'd really get behind it. I'd really have the energy there, the passion. Just everything was would be behind it. It's just not there. It doesn't seem as if it's there. That's my honest opinion. Honest crypto journey. Um, all those in the house, good morning to you. Just like been testing out Digibyte Wallet. It's very fast and secure. Now I'm using DigID. Excellent. I've not looked at that yet, so that's brilliant that you're doing that, Just like. Um, be good to get some videos on that as well. I don't know if anybody has done videos. I'm still buying all the way down, not just waiting for a thousand dollars. Yeah, I would as well. I would as well. That's I could put it all my. Uh, in fact, we're selling a house just now, and we're actually moving on with it. Actually, I know we've been selling it for ages, but we're kind of moving on with it. And if we weren't actually buying another property straight away, I did put it to my wife. We could use the money that we've got and put it all into crypto for one year and just rent for a year and just waiting it kind of going up or even two years, just rent for two years, take money out of the, the kind of money we've kind of got from selling the house. We would take two years worth of rent out. So we've got two years worth of rent and put the rest into Bitcoin um, and just kind of waiting it going up and imagine that would be that would be amazing if you put a hundred thousand pounds in, and two years time you got five hundred thousand pounds out, and then you just buy the house that you really do want, and you can afford the house that you really do want, as well. Not just the uh, although we found one, we found one last night, but I'm not going to tell you about that. Can't believe it. As the first house we've seen when this house has kind of been sold, we've kind of we've sold it already, but we were waiting on the kind of buyers of this house selling their house, and they've now officially kind of sold their house. So now we're moving on. Uh, and we thought, okay, this is the first flat that we're going to see since that kind of news came in. And we, we loved it. We kind of really, really loved it. And we're going to go and move ahead with that. So can't believe it. it's the first one we've seen, especially where we're looking to move to as well. Because usually you get, you put offers in, it gets knocked back and you have to do this maybe 10, 20, 30 times. But it's the very first one we've seen and I think we're going to get it at a good price. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Anyway. Wouldn't BTC crash into 1k range, extend the bear market, make the recovery tougher? Would the bots of whales allow that to happen as it goes against their interest as well? I don't think it's going to happen. I honestly do not think it's going to happen. But it could do. We have to admit that. We have to kind of look at it and say to ourselves, could it happen? We have to ask that question. Yes, it could. Of course it could. It, it definitely could. Mark Innes is in house. Good morning to you. Um, James Gibbons, Steve's opinion on Hyperwave, spot on. Thank you for the mentorship, Steve. This channel has matured and educated me. Ah, thanks, mate. And you as well, what you're doing in the group is brilliant um, as well. So really appreciate your kind of efforts in the group as well, um, James. Quantify Crypto, Neo's looking good on one day and wondering about one week. Neo is looking brilliant, to be honest. I think Neo is going to be popping very, very soon. Neo BTC. We'll look at the kind of USD value as well. Yeah, look at that. We've kind of mentioned that it was going to pop at 203,000 Satoshi, um, but it's kind of popped around about there as well, and we're up to 229,000. That's on a four hour. If we look on the daily chart, it looks really good to start popping bigger, big time here. Um, we've kind of gone up to the recent all time high of 240,000 Satoshi. So if we can surpass that level, for Neo, then we're doing good again. That's another kind of cup and handle kind of scenario forming. And then we're looking at the level of here or here. Can move down to about here. We'll just look at the 262. Then we're breaking through the 3000 kind of barrier as well. Neo's looking brilliant just now, I have to say. Um, did you idea I mean? Yeah, I, I kind of knew what you meant there. Um, Liam, I'm still buying all the way down. All right, I've done that. Wouldn't, Steve's playing on Hyperwave. Neo's looking good. Not FUD. If there's nothing they can give about progress, uh, thank you for your transparency. Thanks, James. And yeah, that's James Oklahoma, one, one of our Brown admins. Appreciate that. Okay, good. thanks for all that you do and the content they provide at your own expense. My pleasure, mate. My pleasure. And thank you for all the donations you've given um, over the coming uh, over the months as well. Really appreciate that. And for everybody that's given donations as well, really appreciate it. Mr. Smith, good morning, guys and gals. Has Bab disappeared off the radar? It's not. We're still talking about it. We were talking about it earlier on as well. We're just kind of 
saying we hope it does get the licenses and stuff like that as well. It's not disappeared, um, definitely not, and I think I really do hope they kind of make it for everybody's sake and their sake as well. And in MPXS now, let's go. Yes, Pundi X I think is looking good. Um, what's happening with BTT? Just now they come down a wee bit. 27, 28, they've come down a wee bit. Lucif is going to go down 26, 27. Um, Pundi X, where are they? Neo is up. Uh, it's gone up. It's gone up today. Neo is, is definitely gone up. 18, 19, it's looking good for Pundi X. Um, so we could get to 19, 20. Satoshi and beyond. I just think they have something up the sleeve, I think. Could this be the, the Pundi double? Um, so we need to get to past the 27 Satoshi. Um, but we'll wait and see what happens. Been talking about Pundi X for donkeys and it just it just doesn't do anything. Um, plus DevCon is coming up as well. Satoshi Sean. Yeah, DevCon for who? Are you talking about for Neo as well? Yeah. Uh, like smash Nora Perez. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. Okay, we've gone past the time again. Uh, looking forward to getting news from DevCon about all those projects built on Neo. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Mohammed Abdullah, I have no credit card. I want to join your premium group. Is there other way to send money? We can do it. I'll need to kind of write to a couple of people who've written to me via email to say, ask if they can pay in BTC um, or other cryptocurrency. Yes, you can do it in crypto as well. Um, and if you write to me at crypto at your digital formula dot com, um, you can get to me there. Um, as well, the, I think there's an email address underneath this as well. And just ask if you can join the premium group. But if you're joining the premium group using cryptocurrency, we can't do it on a monthly basis. We can only do it on six monthly or a yearly basis. And I'll give you the kind of values for that as well. And I'll need to write to, I think it's, I'm not going to say names who wrote to me, but I know who it is. So I need to get back to you today. We were out looking at houses and that yesterday as well and talking to lawyers and stuff. So kind of, it was a busy day yesterday with the crypto as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it there just now. Thanks, Satoshi Sean as well, Seen talking about Neo for DevCon, yeah. Um, really appreciate your time this morning. Um, how many people have got in? 39 people in. If the 39 people in have not already hit the likes, go down to like button and hit that like button if you've not already. If you genuinely liked the video, if you thought the video was shite, then just kind of hit the thumbs down button. Um, but if you liked it, hit the thumbs up as well and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you want to join us in a premium group, um, you can. There's a link down below. We've got some brilliant chat in there as well. Some amazing people in there. But you get calls every day as well with their average call gaining about 90, well, 16, 17%-ish. Some 100%, some 1%. But on average, about 16, 17%. Just now. Just now. Namaste, Steve, and your family as well. Thank you very much, Donny Don. Okay. Have a brilliant day for whatever you're doing. And I will see you same time, same place tomorrow. Until then, namaste. Take care. Bye now. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.